That's why this episode is about dog poop. Dog poop. Yeah, right. And how dog poop actually can make you a better podcaster. Let's dive in. Most hosts never achieve the results they hoped for. They're falling short on listenership and monetization, meaning their message isn't being heard and their show ends up costing them money. This podcast was created to help you grow your listenership and make money while you're at it. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Adam Adams. What's up, podcaster? It's your host, Adam A. Adams, and we are talking about how poop can help you be a better podcaster. And actually, this idea came from my mother. Shout out to my mom who listens to all of my podcast episodes. I've actually got this email from my mom, and it says, I have not yet listened to all of your shows yet, but this came to my mind as I was thinking about getting her show going. Basically, there's a lot of stuff that you got to do. There's a lot of different work. And I'm really going to be talking about two things to help you be a better podcaster. One is picking up the poop, what that means and how to do it. And two is offloading the shit, if you will, so that you don't have to be picking up the poop if you don't want to. So let's just get our minds around it. I'm going to read an email that came from my mom, and I hope you like it. I hope it works out. Actually, in fact, she's working with our team. So we're launching a podcast for her. So I'm really excited. She's launching a podcast and stay tuned because I think you're going to want to hear it. She's actually a really, truly remarkable person. Super grateful to have her as my mom, to be able to grow up with this influence and stoked to be able to be working together and helping her launch her show. But as she's coming up with her podcast and figuring out what she needs and what she doesn't need, she's realizing there's a lot of shit going on. There's a lot of crap that we got to clean up. And I remember me personally, I don't know if you can resonate with this. I never cleaned up poop. Like, it would really make me vomit. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't take the smell, the thought of it. My brain is like massively powerful on all the bad stuff that's happening. So when I'm trying to clean it up, I just couldn't. And a lot of people have made fun of me in my life. I love animals. I love dogs. I love pets. When it's your pet, when you clean up the poop, when you own it, when you clean up the hair or whatever, I love pets. I'll come in, swoop in, show them all the love that I possibly can, and then go home and be happy that I don't have to clean up the poop. But let's talk about cleaning up some shit right now. Let's just talk about it. My mom's email, she basically says, many kids want a dog, but owning a dog comes with a responsibility of, I'm sorry, cleaning up poop. Therefore, if somebody's considering getting a dog or your kids are getting a dog, it's essential to focus on that, to plan for that, to be able to handle the waste of your animal. And that can include carrying out the poop bags that don't smell so good, finding suitable waste places to put everything, and regularly cleaning up after the dog. By being responsible and diligent about picking up after your dog, she says, you can help keep your community clean, prevent disease, all these benefits, right? There's all these good things about cleaning up the poop, even though we don't want to. And we go on to say, unable to connect to chat. Let me see. I got some random thing that showed up. I don't think it's important. Therefore, if someone's considering getting a dog, it's essential to figure out how to do all that. Having a podcast is kind of, my mom says, having your show, having your podcast is kind of like having a dog. There's a lot of responsibility. There's different things you need to focus on. There's different things that need to happen. And some of it's not pretty. Some of it's not fun. Let me find where we are on the email. She says, we got to be able to manage beyond just the enjoyable aspects. Just as you can't simply focus on the rewards of having a happy and loyal dog without considering the responsibility of feeding, watering, and cleaning up after them, you can't solely focus on the fun and the creative aspects of a podcast or your business without taking care of some of the administrative and operational aspects. She goes on to say in this email that she sent me and gave me this awesome idea for a podcast, in all these cases, success requires planning, preparation, execution of multiple tasks. For example, in a business, she says, you need to create a solid business plan. You always hear me talk about this. Ready, aim, fire. Not ready, fire, aim. Ready, aim, fire. Figure it out. What's that guy's name? Stephen Covey. He says in the seven habits of highly effective people, if you want to be an effective person, you got to do the things that Stephen Covey says to do. And that is to begin with the end in mind. That's exactly what my mom's talking about. Ready, aim, fire. Not ready, fire, aim. Not just throwing it out there. Actually, for her, she's been spending a lot of time 
to launch her podcast. She's been spending a lot of preparation on the website, on who the avatar is, what is the reason for this? How are we going to add value to her avatar? How are we going to make money through it? There's a lot of thought process. There's a lot of shit that happens when we have a podcast. So let me continue on. And she's talking about, you want to be able to record, edit all your episodes. You want to manage social media. You got to engage with your audience. By the way, my company, it's called Grow Your Show. The podcast is the podcast on podcasting, but my company is Grow Your Show at growyourshow.com. We actually handle a lot of that shit, so you don't have to, but we'll get back to that in a little bit. My mom goes on to say, overall, owning a dog, running a business, or having a podcast all require what? She says, commitment. She says, responsibility. And the willingness to do some of the less glamorous tasks. However, the rewards can be significant. And with careful planning, begin with the end in mind, and execution, you can enjoy a fulfilling and successful experience with whatever you're doing. So let's talk a little bit about your podcast. What is the shit that goes around with your show? Let's see. My mom already mentioned it. It's editing the podcast. It's getting the guests. It's recording. It's uploading. It's writing the show notes. And a lot of people hate doing that. It's writing all the show notes. Like if you have a podcast, you have something called the show notes, which it's a description of what people will hear. And you've got to be able to figure that out. And sometimes these tasks, maybe it doesn't smell bad to you, but it's not fun. And we end up procrastinating. You end up procrastinating, most likely, if you're anything like me. I'm the best at procrastinating. I remember I had the job of garbage. That was my job at my house growing up with my parents. And my mom and dad, I would drive them nuts because I was always doing it. They were like, hey, today's garbage day. I'm like, I know, I'm going to do it. And they're like, well, can you take care of it? I will. It's not tomorrow yet. I'm good, right? And so it ended up always being last minute. Same thing with my assignment. Same thing with most things in my life. I was just on a trip out of the country. And when I did that, I had to have my assistant pack my bags for me because I'm like, I don't want to do that. It's taking too long. And so I was like, hey, can you help me? So it worked out. So if you don't want to do the hard thing, then you got to at least hire off the hard thing. So you got to know kind of what those things are. For your podcast, we've mentioned a couple of them, editing, cutting out some of the ums and uhs, and some of them you might want to keep in to make sure that you're sounding natural. So you might not want to use those crappy, what are they called? There's these like AI, there's a few of them. And What you end up doing is you go to the AI, you say, cut out all the words that are um, or cut out all the uhs. And then what ends up happening is it sounds like crap because the breath is um, because it only has part of the um or part of the uh, because it doesn't understand where to cut it out and where to leave it. So it ends up sounding horrible by using that AI. So when you're doing your own, you might not want to cut all of them out. You might want to pick and choose. And that's what my team does. So want to figure out, is it a lot of work? Is it a little bit of work? You got to figure out your avatar. If you haven't launched yet, you got to figure out who am I even helping? What do I do? So I'm going to give you four quick tips for your avatar. And then I'm going to give you a sales pitch to say, work with Grow Your Show if you're going to do a podcast. And we're going to jump off and I'll see you on the next episode. So here's those four tips. First and foremost, it is going to be, if you're figuring out who is your avatar, you got to really understand Their demographics, psychographics, their geographics first, and that's number one, is like to identify specifically who is it that you want to add value to? Who's the right person for you to work with? Who's like your best client that you've ever had? And him or her or they, its name is Bob. Okay. So Bob, that's your avatar. That's who you figured out. Like, I love working with Bob. Bob's a real person. He's somebody I've already worked with. So that becomes your avatar. And you want to figure out... Number one, psychographics, demographics, and geographics. Where does Bob live? What is he worried about? What is he trying to achieve? That's number one. Number two is your unique proposition. What that means is what are you doing that's different from anyone else who serves Bob? Somebody else might, like I'm a podcast producer. My company, Grow Your Show, we help people with their shows. So what do we do that's different? So step one is I need to figure out who do I serve? It's a podcast host that's crazy successful already in life. They understand the value of offloading their stuff so that they can focus and just be the star of their show. And 
they probably are a coach or a mentor. So this is like my main person that I want to help. So I understand step one, and I go through the demographics, geographic, psychographics. Steps two is, how do I help that person better than any other podcast producing company out there? What does Grow Your Show do that they don't? And then I've got to define all of that. I've got to figure out, like, what do I do that's different, that's unique? Because I don't remember where I heard this. It was only a couple of days ago. But what it was is that somebody was saying like, Oh, it was Russell Brunson. So I watched a little recording of Russell Brunson and he was talking about there was this girl at, that came to one of his events and she basically said that she was a babysitter. And he asked, what do you do that's different? And this girl actually had like number of things that actually were different. Well, when they work with me, I don't let them eat candy or something. I don't remember the specifics, to be honest, but I remember it being pretty cool because it was like things that actually set her apart that made her a little bit different. So it was like when I teach them the ABCs, we cook together, we clean together, we do this, we do that. And when your kids are with me, I don't just let them just get on their screens. I pour into them. I try to help them. And so what Russell said is, and you're charging five an hour and they're charging five an hour and they're charging five an hour. And she's like, yeah. And I think what he told the girl was, I'll pay you 20. Like, I don't care that you want to pay, want to get paid five. You're special. You're doing something unique for your avatar, which was him in that position. He was the perfect avatar. He has kids and he wants to be able to have date night with his wife or go somewhere or whatever it is. And this person, this young woman, maybe 12, 13, 14 years old, had a niche. And that's the most important part, just having that niche. So step two, figure out what you do that's unique and different. There's two more steps. I need to remember where I am with that. And we are recording live on Facebook, which is awesome because then you're going to hear the only people on Facebook are probably going to be able to hear me flutter around and make these notes of these last two things. So give me just a second. This won't go in the recording. Trust me. This is how we record actual podcasts is we are fine with messing up. It's just a little different when you're on Facebook for live. So give me a sec. I know actually that is all four of them. That is all four. F. So number one, here we go in three, two, one. As a matter of fact, those are all four. So it's understanding your person, but their psychographics, understanding your person, all the geographics, understanding your person, their demographics, how much money they make, et cetera, and what you do that's totally different. With that said, Grow Your Show can help you if you're ready to launch or rebrand, start a new podcast, or grow the show that you've already got. Call the company that's called Grow Your Show at growyourshow.com. Schedule a discovery call. I'd be happy to help you. And I will see you on the next episode. Bye for now. Oh, hey, because three of my clients came to me recently looking to find a way to have their podcast make the money instead of cost them money. We put together a resource for some of our clients and I want to give it to you as well. It's something that did actually seem to help because one of them is now making $2,600 a month. Another one's $4,500 a month. And the third is making between $5,000 and $10,000 each month. And so it's been a resource that's been incredibly valuable to them. It's our sponsor sheet template. It's a template of a sponsor sheet, and it gives you something that you can hand to potential sponsors and hopefully also be making 2,600, 4,500, or between five and 10K regularly each month with your podcast. So this has been a contributing factor to helping all three of those clients turn their podcast into an additional income stream for them. And the way that you can find it is just going to our website, growyourshow.com, but put in forward slash templates, growyourshow.com forward slash templates. And then you can actually download that template and others that could be valuable to your podcasting experience. I'll see you on the next episode.